and two and oh Craig Smith who had a terrific short run at Utah State has really turned around this program in just a short time lineups here big note for BYU Fuseni Traore who missed the last game is back in Bob that's important he's had some nagging injuries and the reason it's important is he will be matched up with Carlson the seven foot player for Utah three it's amazing they first met in 1909 BYU won 32 to 9 that was a high scoring game yeah. back then yeah. Mark Pope says his team is a work in progress. Craig Smith says his team is better than everybody expected. They were picked 10th in the preseason poll in the Pac-12, and they already beat Arizona at home, and it was a spanking. This is Jackson Robinson, and right away, Traore with a right hand, and BYU's off to a 2-0 start. He's given away about five inches, but he is extremely strong and extremely long. Utah has a lot of experience. They're an excellent defensive team and a great three-point shooting team. And everyone, it seems, can shoot the three. This is Wooster driving down the lane. Maybe the most improved player in the Pac-12. He was awesome in their game against Arizona. Nearly a triple-double, 12 points, 11 rebounds for a guy 6'3", and 9 assists. Talented freshman with the ball for BYU, Dallin Hall. He doesn't turn it over a whole lot. They like him. The best scorer on the team comes off the bench. That's Hall, step back three, missed it, and the offensive rebound, and that's what BYU does well. They crash the boards. The problem for BYU has been perimeter shooting. It's been up and down. Chiore is incredibly strong, and he muscles one in. How about that? Big matchup there. 6'6", 240, and 240 might be light. Keba Keda is the backup center for Utah. He's more physical than Carlson is. He might be useful in this game. Let's take a look inside. Foose, they call him. He uses his body to protect the basketball from the taller player. Very, very physical guy. BYU is without Travis Snell and Spencer Johnson. They're two best three-point shooters. Mark Pope hopes to get them back before West Coast Conference play. That's Hall with a drive. Look at Foose! And he's fouled. And he'll get two free throws. You talk about impacting the game. Traore has done it immediately in this one. Two one-on-one -on -one plays, getting a rebound out of his area. He is making a statement here. 68% from the line, averages 12 and 9 on the season. Without the three-point shooters, Mark Pope told us, look, we can't depend on that. We can still win games without that, and one of the things that we have to do is really hit the offensive glass, and there's the two shooters. Well, they hit the offensive glass in their best win against Creighton. They destroyed Creighton in the lane, and that has given them a lot of confidence in going to the offensive boards. Marco Anthony, one of the players that came with Smith from Utah State. Wooster, another. Wooster, much faster than he was as a freshman. That's a great three-point shooter, and you can't leave Gabe Madsen alone. They didn't leave him alone. He made it anyway. <laughs> he has got the quickest trigger on this team by far. Deadly from three-point range. Anthony is not deadly from three-point range, number 10, but man, he is, you talk about a glue guy, he is it. Hall penetrates, drops it off, Traore the miss, and Ben Carlson, who does a lot of the dirty work for Utah, blue-collar guy, transfer from Wisconsin, has the rebound, steal, Madsen's open again, and he misses the three. Madsen's 40% from downtown. Noah Waterman, a big, likes to operate in the perimeter. Traore, again. Oh. Oh. oh, man. I think he's taking the challenge of playing against Carlson. I, I think it's personal. He has all eight of BYU's points. Madsen blocks. Waterman met him at the rim. 
in transition. George with the miss. You talk about home court advantage. 18,000 arena. Anthony, a strong move. He's left-handed. That was with the right. He is really, really a good player. As you mentioned, transfer. He has been at three schools. He started off at the University of Virginia, transferred to Utah State. Now he's here at the University of Utah. Very, very strong player. Smart player. Raleigh Wooster with the foul, his first personal. Anthony on the move. Very, very difficult shot, and he makes it. Tough player. He's a winner. Kata, as I mentioned, Rich, has checked into the game, and I think he's going to play an important role in, in guarding Traore in this game. And so Brandon Carlson sits down. Kaba Kata, 6'8", 230. Number 13 in the red. Also, he's, he's matched up with Foos right now. Lazar Stefanovic is in for Utah. And a turnover for BYU. Stefanovic is from Serbia. Very smart, cerebral, solid player. Also can shoot it. Doesn't make many mistakes. Booster working against a much bigger defender. Coughs it up. Hall in transition. A three. Robinson. Oh, a tip! <laughs> I think it was Anthony that tipped it. <laughs> oh, man. We got to show that again. That was a pure accident. Anthony, a bigger body, backing in. And a foul on a reach around by Dallin Hall. Well, you wanted intensity. We've got it already here. Utah, BYU. If, if, if he scores 10 points every five minutes, he's going to have a lot of points in this game. Yeah, and he got the tip. So now he has all 10 points. Mark Pope told us today, I'm hoping, he, you know, we can we get a couple minutes out of him in this one. I think he's going to get a lot more than a couple minutes. <laughs> Well, that was a foul on uh, Waterman right there on the inbounds play. He grabbed Carlson. Let's keep an eye on Kata. See what he does on the interior. He's much more physical than, than Brandon Carlson, but he, he's not as good offensive player. Rudy Williams is in the ballgame for BYU. Their leading scorer comes off the bench. Transfer from Coastal Carolina. There's Kata. And BYU winning the war of the boards. And Rudy Williams has his first touch. Williams was starting at point. But switched spots with Dallin Hall. Now comes off the bench. Atiki. And misses in tight. Anthony has the rebound. Traore can't score right now because he's on the bench. Opportunity time. The defense has been impressive for BYU so far in this game. Booster demanding the ball. Anthony, good rotation. Nice movement here. Three guards in the game right now. Stefanovic is fouled. He was inside the strike. He'll get two free throws. Thirteen foul on Brigham Young. Stefanovic is... 15 for 16 from the free throw line so far. Serbian player. They have great club basketball in that country. He's one of two guys who shoots better from three than from two. It's 43% from distance. And he hits his first free throw. Tomorrow morning, 8 Eastern. Get ready for week 15 of the NFL with that other pregame show right here. CBS Sports Network. Boy, he's got perfect form. See how that ball rotates right through the net, keeps his follow through, his shooting hand up in the air. Very, very nice. He's only 17 of 18 so far this season. <laughs> Switching, switching man to man right here. Yep, Richie Saunders off the bench for BYU in the backcourt with Williams. And on a drive, a reaching foul from that guy, Gabe Madsen. Madsen last year had a collapsed lung his first year at Utah after transferring from Cincinnati. Much healthier this year and off to a great start. Yeah, and you really, uh, you only can't 
you know, he was only, only played two games at Cincinnati. It was like he wasn't even there, you know? Uh, so his career has been here at Utah. It's like a long layover at the Cincinnati-Kentucky Airport, <laughs> which is actually in Kentucky, by the way. In Northern Kentucky, you got that right. Late clock for BYU. Robinson launches a deep three and misses it badly. And a rebounding foul on Utah, and that's Kaba Keita. So far, this game is going, I mean, it, it's tension on it, right? So it's close. Rivalry game, it's going to be close probably. There'll be some spurts in this game. But really, coming into this game, Utah has accomplished much more in their season than BYU has. And uh, Mark Pope has been very, very positive, even when the team was not playing that well. And uh, it has paid off. His attitude really has permeated the team. We just saw Tanner Toulson come in. There goes Robinson off. Tanner Toulson is just a freshman and a great name in Utah basketball. His cousin Jacob, star here at BYU, is father Andy was certainly a star here as well. Where we go? Well, not that long ago. Andy. I like what uh, Craig Smith has done here. He's got Kada and Carlson in the game at the same time, so Kada can do kind of the dirty work. And Carl's can, can really be the foreman instead of the center, and he's much more comfortable shooting outside. Carlson burned Arizona from the outside when they played. That's a great point. He, he can be a back-to-the-basket guy or a pick-and-pop guy. His problem is at the other end. Defensively, he, he, you know, as we saw early in this game, playing against physical players on the interior, it, it, it's, it's tough for him. Now he drifts to the perimeter a little bit, takes the smaller guy. Atiki, I think that ball was going to be an air ball, even though it was on its way down. He, for good measure, just knocked it in the seats. He's the best shot blocker on this team, even though he doesn't play that much. He is well above the rim. That's not basket interference or goaltending because the ball had not reached its... Yeah, in the second look, it did look like it was going to get at least to the rim. Yeah, it was still on its way up. I, I'm sorry, I, I was watching that interior play right there. The ball, when it reaches its, its zenith, you cannot touch it in college basketball. Something we all aspire to in life. <laughs> Brandon Carlson, the, the improvement that he's had, first under Larry Kostowiak and now year two for Craig Smith, is... Pretty impressive, Bob. You look at his timeline every year, a couple more points a game, a couple more rebounds a game. So now he's a, a first-team Pac-12 guy. 22 against Arizona on 5 of 9 from three-point range. His numbers are good, and that's unusual for him to miss. He's 73% from the foul line, so missing two. He could be nervous a little bit in this game. Tiki's still in there with his two fouls. Has the ball stolen. And now, on a reach, he may have just picked up his third personal. That's a good foul. That's a breakaway dunk. Right here, he grabs him. So instead of breakaway dunk, they're just inbounding because they're not in the penalty yet. Third personal. That's okay. You know, Atiki doesn't play a ton of minutes. So, you know, his what contributions he can make, he can make when he's playing with four fouls or something like that. That's not a that's not an issue for their team. Trey Stewart is in, and he joins Gideon George in the BYU backcourt, along with Rudy Williams. Very small team in here for BYU right now. George got a hand on it. He's a terrific player on both oh, sides of the ball, right? Yeah, he really, he's got long arms, which makes for better defensive players usually. He's experienced. He talks a lot out there on the floor. You can see him motioning what the defense is going to be on this possession. Frequent substitutions by both coaches in this game. They understand that the rivalry will make guys get more tired expending big time energy here. Booster whips it back. There's Carlson's three. And that's one of the things that he does best. You pointed it out against Arizona, against Washington State. Yep, that's his game, really. He's a stretch four. He's really not a center. And that's a walk. And you see the drought for BYU. Two points in the last seven and a half minutes. Brandon Carlson is shooting 47% from three-point range for a seven-footer. That's NBA-ish. 
46 points in his last two games coming into this one. There he is again. Utah has grabbed the lead, but not that basketball over the head of Carlson. You can see how, you know, when we show Carlson up close, you see how thin he is. His arm, you know, he's gotten stronger over the course of his career, but he has very thin arms, thin upper body, you know, thin legs. So, you know, he's, he's not as strong as a lot of the guys he's going to be playing against. But he's very, very skillful, and he's gotten stronger. Stewart, nice dish. George with the finish. That's some explosiveness there, my friend. Very, very good. Wooster has not been involved in the offense much in this game, and that's a negative for the Utes. Stefanovic, left hand, oh. nice. <laughs> you talk about fundamentals, huh? Both hands, nice drive. He scored 20 in a game this year. You know, he can knock down threes if he needs to. He can just play D if he needs to. He can just pass if he needs to. Gideon George, that's a three. There's a lot of students here in this building, even though they are off for a break right now. Finals have ended. Madsen around the horn. He's got the right. He's got it right. Lob. Ben Carlson with the catch in the bucket. It's a Carlson to Carlson. <laughs> Not related. Not related. But they work well together. Wisconsin transfer. Rudy Williams, Coastal Carolina, leads his team with 13 points. Hasn't done much so far on this one. He was starting earlier in the year, and then they put Hall in because they ran smoother with Hall, and he's adjusted to his position. That one almost down and out from Brandon Carlson. Here we go again. This is how the game started. Traore gets in deep. Jump hook. Uh-uh. And that's what Ben Carlson does for Brandon Carlson. He's he the muscle. <laughs> Dribble handoff. Nice screen. Perfect execution. Get to March. Oh. That could be a really impactful, if they're looking for an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, they're going to look back at that win over number four Arizona because I don't Arizona is playing pretty well despite that loss and, and the thing that that makes it so impressive to me uh, you know Arizona came to altitude right okay so that it's an advantage for Utah playing at home against a team that's not from altitude but the the shocking thing was was how much they beat them by and their defense because Arizona is such a good offensive team. You know, Tommy Lloyd, the coach there, was at, at Gonzaga. And, I mean, every guy on that team can get 25 in a night. Here we go again. This has been about the seventh time they've done the isolation bit. That's offensive against Traore, who's got 10 points in this ballgame. That is excellent, excellent by Carlson. Watch this now. Watch him drop his shoulder. He drops his shoulder and pushes off with his left hand. Watch his left hand. Two fouls right here is big, big for Pope now. He has a man up off the bench, but it didn't come in time for this defensive possession. So Triori is out there with two fouls. You got to hand it to Carlson. He got beat early in this game defensively by Triori three times, and he decided to do something different. Bump a little bit and then take the charge. His offense has been stellar also. Two for four from the field. A couple buckets for him. Good rebound by Waterman. Nice find. And Traore from Williams. And at BYU sharing the ball. Great pass by Rudy there. See that number right there, that offensive rebounds. That's a huge key if BYU wants to stay with Utah in this game. And that's not from me. That's from Mark Pope. Stefanovic misses a deep three. Great effort there by Ben Carlson. Madsen fouled by Williams. Both of these teams are well coached, and they share the ball. Offensive rebound, three passes into an easy play inside. Both teams are good decision makers.
Traore now with two fouls. Still in the game. Rochester, Minnesota. You know what's there, right? The uh, Mayo Clinic. I've been there. The Mayo Clinic. Yeah. Very impressive. We have one in Jacksonville, yes, too. And so you he do. went to Mayo High School. Mayo Senior High School. I didn't realize that the uh, clinic had a high school right there. I don't know the nickname of that team, but I would suggest maybe the surgeons. The doctors. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> foul Very trouble good. for BYU. Nine team fouls already right now. Utah has just four. That doesn't make Mark Pope real happy. And the Cougars down five. Robinson straight on three. Wooster, who's a very good rebounding guard, sucks it up for Utah. Robinson is a, his contributions come with three point shooting. Look at this, deep. And uh, has not been on lately. He doesn't get to the free throw line at all, doesn't drive it at all. That's not his thing. That's an ambitious lob from Hall. Anthony. Carlson, he walks. Kind of a, a jump stop and then start and one too many steps. That happens when you're seven feet tall and you're playing away from the basket. But he did a good job when he got back in there defensively and offensively. Craig Smith needs him to score. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But Kata, as a physical presence on this team, is vital for their deep success in the Pac-12. You know, when you think about rebounding, and, and we're talking a lot about BYU's getting oh, rebounded, oh, oh. a shot by Hall. You think of Wooster and Anthony, who are mid-sized guys. They average six rebounds per game, both of them. That's a lot for a guard. Anthony isolated. Non-shooter, but very strong. And a lefty. Muscles up. Hall with the rebound. Down. Ball is quick, man. This guy really can move. He's got that stutter step game. Made two shots this year to win games. Beat Creighton on his own follow shot. That's the best win and the best game for BYU this year. Maybe not the last few minutes of that game, but the win and the... It's not looking as great now because now... Nice play by Kata. Fronting. Troyori never gets fronted when Carlson's on him. But Kata's quick enough to do that. Now Kata in the blocks. That would be offensive. Oh, Tight ball game, game here. Great rivalry as well. Craig Smith in Utah. Number 22. Hang it from the rafters, brother. Not just the uh, only basketball royalty here. Who else is here? Jimmer. Oh, Jimmer for that. There's yeah. been a Jimmer sighting, at least that's been reported. Led the nation in scoring. Anthony steals what was not a great pass. Utah with the ball in a two-point lead. And Ben Carlson draws contact. And foul trouble continues for BYU. Rudy Williams is coming in for Pope. And I, I think what that they need some spark, you know, and, and he's a guy who can do that. He is a he's a he's a point guard. But he's, he's a driver to the basket. They're not getting much of that right now. Most of their interior play is post-ups to Triori, and now he's out of the game. So I think this is a good substitution. There's Jimmer. We can confirm his attendance. You know, he was playing in China, and my son coaches in the professional league in China. And he's a I mean, he would get 50, I mean, uh, almost every night. What a scorer he was. Man. Bob, BYU is their smallest lineup of the game so far. I mean, Waterman is 6'11", but he plays on the perimeter. Yes. So, yes. so that's a signal to go inside for Utah, for sure. Williams. Rudy! Yep. Good substitution, Mark Pope. You need that guy. Anthony going right at Waterman. Hit the backboard. Richie Saunders. The tip. Rudy. Again. BYU a 9-0 run. And a four-point lead. The Marriott Center.
Gardner is officially bout. make an adjustment to his starting lineup and take Rudy Williams out of there. You see he's averaging 13 a game. That's off, number off, one on the team. Off the bench, he's averaging over 16 a game. It allows Hall to be comfortable as a starter. And they work very well together. Rudy's been kind of a mentor to Hall, who's much younger. Brandon Carlson. Madsen steps inside the three. He's a better shooter beyond the arc than he is inside the arc. Indeed. Georgian transition. Bodied by Wooster. Sweeping hook. Held ball. Saunders and Stefanovic. Saunders has gotten two offensive rebounds. He's the one that tapped that back out so Rudy, Rudy could hit the three. Man, he is keeping it alive on the glass. Woo! You know, that 9-0 run, Bob, I think should serve as a reminder to what this BYU team can be when Travis Nell is back, when Spencer Johnson is back. They're two really good three-point shooters. That adds to, to what they have right now. They've been up and down with their three-point shooting. When they're up, that makes a gigantic difference. Clear side. Madsen steps through and scores. He's got game. He really has game. He knows how to play. Look at the speed. That Saunders, the freshman, who throws it away. Utah wants to run off of turnovers, but Carlson can't find an outlet. Wooster has been absent from the scoring in this game. They've done a good job defensively on him. He's really not looking to score as much as he should. And he's got just four points, two shots, two buckets. That's it. Yep. Usually he's a lot more involved than that. Stefanovic, that's an air ball. And here comes BYU. Williams in full flight. He's fast. In the lane. Rudy again. Scoring machine. Eight Give me points. more minutes, coach. Give me more minutes. Eight points off the bench. Rudy Williams and BYU back up four. Wooster. Boy, collapsing defense, great by BYU. Anybody gets it to the paint, and they attack the ball. This match here, turnaround jumper. There you go. Short little hook. Brendan Carlson now with seven. Yeah, that was a mismatch on Hall. That happens sometimes when you switch a lot. Madsen with a reach. BYU and Utah, the rivalry. Rudy. Closest you can get to the criteria of the selection committee, they are number 20 in the net. So there's that. It's been a fun game so far. BYU's had foul trouble, and both their bigs have been on the bench. Paul and Rudy Williams in the game at the same time. This is a very, very small team out there right now. And you got Trey Stewart, a 6-2 guard, also in that trio of they got four guards and they got a six foot ten guy who's allergic to the paint <laughs> so this is the time to drive it in there hard and you can't take anything for that can you <laughs> i'll tell you but they're doing a great job keeping people on the perimeter here wooster the fast hand loses it hall has it up to williams bucket hall and williams for governor and senator They really can't get the ball inside. The perimeter defense is so, so good. Stewart with a steal. Williams on the run. Rises. Hits! Rudy! 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 Marco Anthony trying to direct traffic here. Guy with the ball is a very experienced player. Anthony driving, shoulder in, offensive foul. Carl 
Clemson is not doing a good enough job of getting open close to the basket. Right here. This is a good call. He muscles in. It's a great example of the new nuance in the defensive rule. If you're backpedaling, you still have defensive position. You can still draw a charge. Yeah, he wasn't. They didn't draw a charge. I mean, he just pushed off. The, the guy was on his hip. All right, we'll make a note of that because we may see it later. No, that's true. That, I mean, that, that is a new emphasis, no doubt about it. I mean, that's that's always been the case, but it's a point of emphasis now. Uh, Rudy comes up short. Carlson's fouled on the rebound, and that's Waterman with the reach. Free throws on the other end. BYU is doing a very good job of reacting to where the ball is and getting their hands on the ball, both in the full court and on the offensive glass. And Pope, of course, is a big guy and was a great player at Kentucky. Maybe some of those things are translating to his team, things that he did as a player. Hey, Bob, take a look at those uniforms. Utah's wearing throwback uniforms, and it is a throwback to the uh, 1986 season. So that's pretty cool. And Script, right? Yeah. Instead of block lettering. Nice. 1986, Utah went 20 and 10, went to the NCAA tournament. Jerry Stroman, Kelvin Upshaw, Manny Hendricks were the great scores. But if you want to turn the clock back even further, we can go back to a graduate assistant straight out of the ABA, no longer a Carolina Cougar, now a assistant at Utah, Bob Winston. Well, yeah, that's, that's, uh, look about the same, don't you think? <laughs> you, yeah, absolutely, I would say. You still got it. You still got that sparkle in your eye. You it got the same haircut, too. <laughs> it was my first coaching job, and it was a revelation. And uh, I had never seen great facilities like the University. This game is what we expected. Intense play. Guys coming off the bench to play great. Back and forth action. Saunders takes an 18-footer. It's tipped out of bounds. Looked like it was last touched by Utah. Gideon George got a hand on it. Those people don't think so. No. Exact is in the game, number 11 for Utah. Strong wing-type guy. Craig Smith said he's one of our middle linebackers. <laughs> We've got three of them. <laughs> Ooh, Great nice. feed and a flush. Stefanovic with the feed. Brandon Carlson with the dunk. Two-point game. That's a way to get Carlson. Instead of posting him up, get him on the high post. Let him roll to the basket. Clear the area for him. Robinson ball fake. Clear for the three. That's his thing. But their defense here is what's keying it. Stays with Utah. Watch the fake on this play that we're going to show you. And officials have overruled the call. BYU gets the possession. Watch the fake. Ball fake to the right. You leave the shooter. That's a no-no. BYU is 5 of 12 from distance. And that's notable because Utah is one of the best defensive three-point teams in the country. Anthony disrupting. Williams settles. Saunders, rotate, Williams, Halls three. Uh-uh. The crowd is so into it right now. They are cheering every pass. 40 seconds left. Lob, Carlson, bump from behind. And he's going back to the free throw line. Utah's been there a lot in the first half. Craig Smith has found something. Carlson was out of the game in terms of being effective. And he moved him away from the low post, put him on the high post, cleared the post area close to the basket so he could roll and they could pass lobs to him. They've done it two or three times in the last three or four possessions. That is really effective coaching. That's where this guy is effective. Utah may be the most improved team in the Pac-12. And this guy has done it without a lot of big transfers, right? These are mostly the guys that were here last year that won just four conference games. Yeah, he did the transfers the year before that when he first came to Utah, right? He brought Anthony with him. He brought Wooster with him. 
Final half minute, entertaining first half. Zone, first possession of zone. Give him something to think about at half at halftime. Hall. They're daring him to shoot. Williams. Another three. Robinson. Uh-uh. Carlson with the rebound. Utah can play for one shot. Stefanovic, pick and roll. Nobody open yet. Exact. And a turnover at the buzzer. Good defense by BYU. Excellent first half for Mark Pope and the Cougars. Without two key guards, BYU unforced errors in the first half. That was big. One other note. Utah had just four assists to go with 10 buckets. BYU, nine assists yeah. with their 14. But BYU's fouling a lot. You know, I mean, the, the, uh, Utah only gave up two for two from the free throw line, and that was early. So they didn't shoot many free throws. First possession. Keep. And into the lane is Gideon George. Stretches the lead to six. Biggest of the ball game. George only had five points in the first half. Was not a big part of their offense. Why not? 18-footer? Yep. Boy, he's good facing, isn't he? He's better facing than he is with his back to the basket, despite his size. Really, really a skillful facing player. I'm looking for Wooster to take a little bit more control of the offense here in the second half for Utah. Played 18 minutes and took just two shots, made them both. Robinson, step back three. He was one of five from three-point range in the first half. Maybe he's gotten his confidence back, boy. He looked good on that one. BYU has come out. And now up seven. Madsen, they've held him in check as well. Carlson again, missed the three. And Dallin Hall has the rebound for BYU. Six for 14 from three for BYU. That's good. Waterman down the lane, contact, and a block. Marco Anthony at the bottom of that pile. Rich, I think that might have been a restricted area call. So maybe Mark Anthony came over. Let's see if we can show that. Watch Mark Anthony come into your picture on the left. Was his foot on the line? Apparently so. It, when you're a help side defender, not, not the guy guarding your man, but a help side guy, you have to be out of that restricted arc to take a charge. Otherwise, it's a block. Noah Waterman, who averages six points, three rebounds a game, is just two of seven. And now three of eight from the free throw line this year. That's interesting. He doesn't get there much because he's usually shooting threes, right? Can Utah get Wooster going? They worked on the defense of the stagger, which is what's going on here right now. Manson hunting a three, misses long. Treore kicked it loose, and at last touched Gideon George. The official was pretty emphatic about that. There were some protestations from the guys in blue. <laughs> George says, look. And they just showed the replay up above. Yeah, that's a problem with... Uh, those big replay boards. Yeah, they're, they're pretty clear, aren't they? 18 footer from Carlson. <laughs> Officials hit, hate replay boards. He's hit a couple mid range buckets. Yeah, but he's still a six point BYU lead. They need more help, though. He can't carry this load by himself. Hall, not a great bounce pass. And here comes Madsen. They're doing a good job on Madsen. He's a quick trigger guy. Quick first step there, and he's in the lane. And go into the line. Yeah, he, he understands how to play. So I, I think what he's understanding is they're playing him very tightly on everything with the ball and without the ball. So as a result, taking it to the basket is really what he needs to do. And that's four fouls on Noah Waterman. So four on Waterman. Remember, Atiki Ali Atiki has got three on the bench, and Traore has been playing with two. That last sequence is a great example of what Mark Pope told us in practice today. 
and really tried to drum into his team, and that was force Gabe Madsen inside the three-point line. Don't let him settle and get a clean look. Saunders comes in here, and he's not using Atiki. Saunders really gets after it. I mean, he goes after the ball. But Atiki needs to be used late in the game. You know, you mentioned he's got the three fouls uh, already. So if he picks up a fourth, they need him when it's tight near the end of the game to defend against Carlson. So that's why Saunders is in here instead. To BYU basketball, five-point lead if you're just joining us. This is a great rivalry and an old rivalry. 1909, the first time they met, 263rd meeting. Look at Hall. Carlson met him at the rim, and that's a foul. Well, this is the first time they went full court pressure, and a uh, good job by attacking right here, and they whack his arm. Foul is called at number 25. Paul is a great player. It's his first year. He's one of many players on BYU's youth team who uh, went on a mission for the latter day of Saints Church. And, um, so they come back a little bit stronger, but you know, haven't played basketball in some time, so it takes them a while to get adjusted sometimes. But he is one that's going to be a good one here. That foul was actually charged to Wooster. It's his second person. I talked to Danny Ainge at halftime, and uh, he seemed happy to be here, and uh, we were happy that BYU had the lead. <laughs> we showed him early in the game. He's sitting right down to Iowa left. Carlson against Traore. Hall, good offside rebound. That's a contested shot. George weaves his way in and scores. Credit Traore. He set a screen in the lane on George's man so he couldn't slide with him all the way to the hoop. Anthony cutting. Ah. Ah. That hurts. Hall looking for a three. Robinson out of the corner. Falling away. BYU right now is playing fast but they're not hurrying. They're playing quickly, but they're not overdoing it. John Wooden would like that, right? Yes, Wooster shot. There's a shot by Wooster. That was BYU's biggest lead. Crowd is engaged. Cougars are doing a terrific job on the glass. And they're getting points from just about everybody. The problem for Utah is they're relying too much on Carlson. And they are a team that is a well-balanced offensive team. So they need to get more balance. Wooster, of course, has to be involved in that. Stefanovic has to be involved in that. Because they're doing a great job on Madsen. He's, he's not going to get big numbers in this game. Wooster forced that shot. Anthony lost the rebound. Jackson Robinson is in the house. His impact George's impact and, and Pope took what like three minutes just talking about what an impact and what, what an asset he's been to Provo, to BYU, to his team, all of them. Effusive in his praise, that was for sure. Rudy Williams is in, number three with the basketball. 12 points in the first half, lit a fire for his team, and he's responsible for them getting the lead. And this is that small lineup with a tiki as the lone big right now. Williams looks at the shot clock. Jackson Robinson is two for two in this half, a three and a two. Down the lane. Missed it. Tip. Kicked out. Saunders three. Anthony can't corral it. Utah down by seven. Kata in. Carson out. Stefanovic blocked by Saunders, the freshman. I am impressed with him. Saunders is really a good athlete, and he plays hard. I mean, solid defense. Guard your man without fouling. He's crashed the offensive board several times. He missed there, though. Anthony couldn't get the shot through the arms of Robinson. Other end! Saunders! Saunders! He can run, man. Back to a nine-point lead. Anthony's embarrassed about it. He's had two missed layups. That's a foul, and he'll get free throws. 
He got fouled twice. He should get four free throws here. Watch the break. Push it. Eyes up. Stay in the middle. Nice left hand. With Allen Hall and Richie Saunders, Tanner Toulson, those are the three freshmen that are now in the rotation for Mark Pope. In the absence of Trevin Nell, Spencer Johnson. Johnson. Williams, you know, I'm watching Williams here, and he has a very interesting uh, persona on the court. I mean, even when he did those great three-point shots and stuff, he doesn't get all excited. He doesn't... Uh, pound his own chest but he needs in Provo really crispy there's your answer one of the keys for Utah Rich is balanced scoring and they really haven't had it in this game you know in the games that they're winning they're scoring 80 something points and, and you know I mean they just are not getting balance and I think you got to credit the defense of BYU they're they've scouted well they understand the strengths of the team the guys that they're playing against Saunders Short on the three, Anthony offside rebound. Utah's a really good three-point shooting team. 39% on the season, but they're just not two, of, two of nine no, in this tonight. game. They've been guarding, they guarded closely. So what you have to do is put the ball on the floor and get twos. Carlson lost the ball. Wooster, plenty of time. Shot fake, three on the way. Uh -uh. Anthony, offensive rebound. And he was fouled on reach. Look like Gideon George. Yeah, on the floor. So it's out of bounds. They're not in the penalty yet. Anthony's really impressive in, in getting close to the basket and getting some of these rebounds, but man, he's not converting. Look at the big guy with a shot fake baseline drive. Brendan Carlson. He's a facing player, I've said many times in this game, and that's his strength. He's got 16. He's the only running youth in double figures. Robinson off the screen. Cut off in the lane. This is George. Leans in. Anthony sucks up another rebound. The average is nearly seven a game. Holt still in the ball game for Utah. Anthony a turnaround. Not a good shot for him. He's not a great outside shooter, but in the lane he's pretty good. But he's being guarded by George, who's got him by about four inches and maybe longer than that with his arm length. Carlson is not guarding a tiki at all. He's hanging in the lane to stop penetration. Williams fouled on the reach. Foul is over. Austin Holt. Let's see who Holt, co uh, Hall comes in for. See, he comes in for Saunders. So now they got two point guards in the game at the same time. This worked well at the latter stages of the first half. Both he and Rudy Williams play well together. That's right. Treori was on the bench when they made that big run. Yep. Hall running. Hook missed it. Anthony the rebound. Utah would like to stir this game up a little bit. In terms of tempo, Anthony walked. I think, yes. Delayed call by the official. It's delayed because Craig Smith was right in his ear. He's still right in his ear. Did he switch pivot feet? Uh, close. I see reticence in a lot of the offensive players for Utah. That's not so much. But he's being guarded so tightly when he puts the ball on the floor, you know, he's not as explosive as some guys. Full court pressure has been moderately successful for them, but it hasn't really closed the gap a lot. But the effort is there. Williams, Jackson Robinson, Dallin Hall in the backcourt, and Madsen a little out of control with the reach and the foul. Third personal on Madsen. You know, Utah has five players, three of whom are in double figures, and the other two guys have nine points something. And we're not seeing that kind of balance in this game. And their leading score just went to the bench for a break. It's Brandon Carlson. 
Makeba Keita back in for Utah. Traore wants it. He's rolling. He's available. Hall rises up with a one-hander and then corrals the rebound and Man, keeps the possession alive. They are hustling on offense. They are really hustling on the boards. Loose balls, they're getting them. Robinson. No. Stefanovic. Madison thought about three. Drives. Big collision. Offensive foul and the fourth on Madsen. He's a 13 point a game guy and their best three point shooter. That's huge. Good help side D. Gideon George in the right place at the right time. Also checking in for Utah number one, Ben Carlson. Ben Carlson is in number one for Anthony, but Carlson is not a scorer. It's more of a rebounder type, set up screen, get somebody else open. BYU turns it over. I mean, they've, they had some neutral site games and games at home, so this is a little bit unusual for them to be on the road. They, they beat Washington State in their conference away in overtime. But this is a whole different story because Washington State doesn't have 18,000 people screaming and yelling on every play. It's just as cold there. <laughs> Wooster, zone defense out of the timeout. Nice execution, but Wooster should have shot that ball. He is really hesitant. Really hesitant. Williams with George. Missed it. Foul, and George goes crashing behind it. Buckets. Wooster is complaining to the official that he got pushed on the hip on that last play. I don't know if he's going to get the call the next time or not. BYU is pushing the tempo. There's no doubt about that in this game. Even though we've only got 47 points here, guys are running. And Brandon Carlson comes back in. To reset what you're watching, it's a great rivalry in Utah. A 9-2 start with a win over number four Arizona. Road win as well in the Pac-12 over Washington State. Excellent three-point shooting team. That's not happening here. Great three-point and field goal defensive team. That's not happening here. Neither one. BYU said they have to really hit the offensive boards because they're top three-point shooters, two of them, are out with injuries. That is happening. Wooster misses another three. Badly. That's two air balls in a row for Wooster. I think we got a change here. Craig Smith's going to get a technical. They're arguing over here. He and the official, I mean, they are heated right now. He's saying that that's enough. He's going to get a technical. Utah now 2 of 11 from distance. And their best three-point shooter, Gabe Madsen's got four fouls. And is on the bench. Still a lot of time in this game. Hall weaves his way in the lane. Dumps it. Traore the catch. That's nicely done. George saves it. Lost it. <laughs> the stumbling possession. Shot clock. Rudy Williams. And a Utah rebound, and here come the running Utes, who haven't done a whole lot of that running tonight. Carlson misses a three. His legs have to be a little tired right now. And he's defensively on Traore right now, which he hasn't had a lot of success with that. Paul Traore! Like I said, he hasn't had a lot of success with that. Back to an eight-point lead. BYU won last year at the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake. Rooster feeding Ben Carlson. Gets to the bucket and scores. Well, the good news is that Rooster is getting more involved. He, he, he's taken three or four shots in the last few possessions, and they need that. 
change of defense here. Zone matchup. So Pope is up, wants somebody to flash into the middle. Robinson will take the three and miss it. That's exactly what Smith wanted. Holt. Rooster looking for his shot. They need Anthony back in the game. Even though he's not playing great, he's experienced. Stefanovic can get them some threes, but he misses there. He was off balance. Hall to the corner. Robinson. Uh-uh. Stefanovic has the rebound. I'm sensing fatigue right now, my friend. A lot of bad plays right now because of mental fatigue. Williams. Back to an eight-point lead. BYU. This is where the crowd helps. Eighteen thousand here. Stefanovic driving, can't finish. Robinson. Robinson. That's a tired team in red right now. Timeout. When he was playing here, he shot from out of bounds a lot of times. He may be the most selfie athlete <laughs> in BYU history simply because they didn't have those back when uh, Danny Ainge was around. The balance scoring four players in double figures for BYU and just one for Utah. And they've only got 54 points, so that, that's... It's not like it, it's a 90-point game or anything. The defense has been so intense by both teams, but BYU is playing better defense right now. Gabe Madsen back in the game for Utah. Stefanovic rises and misses. He is 0 for 7 in this game. Robinson over Madsen missed it. Kada lost the rebound. And a foul, I think. That's why he lost it. And that foul is going to be on Atiki. Ali Atiki. Fourth person. Atiki is the kind of guy who's going to get a lot of fouls. I mean, he goes after it on the offensive glass. He goes after it on block shots. And Mark Pope is going to live with that all year in the West Coast Conference. And he's not going to mind that one bit. So it's a 10-point lead. Seven and a half minutes left. Utah's had a miserable day shooting. 15 of 42. 2 of 13 from distance. Atiki, Ali Atiki. Waterman. Uh -uh. Nice block outs there. BYU is getting back quickly too, limiting fast break opportunities. Madsen three, no, missed it. He's two of seven from the field. Williams driving. And free throws coming. When you shoot a long three, it's usually a long rebound. And that leads to fast breaks for your opponents. Well, Utah has missed 11 straight three-point shots. Wow. Two of 14. And that just doesn't happen this year. 39% coming in. Well, like we said at the start of this game, rivalry games are unusual. They don't follow statistics very much. Crazy things happen. And, of course, coming into this game, you would think that Utah had accomplished more this season than BYU. But Mark Pope said it all last week. They kept asking him about it, and he said, we're a work in progress, and we're going to get better and better, and his positive attitude about it. Changed his starting lineup. Did some things. It's working. He's got his biggest lead right now by 12. Madsen falling away. Uh-uh. Nothing's dropping for Utah. And here comes BYU. George doesn't have numbers. Spins into a double. Kicks to Williams. Good job by Stefanovic to get that baseline. 
Williams, 18-footer. Yeah! How about the step back? That was a great move. He was guarded well and backed up. Jump stop backwards to create space. When you're a little guy like him, you got to do it. Watch this now. Jump back. Jump back, Jack, and knock it in. Rudy Williams. There is a, I believe it's a flop call. Remember, there's no warning this year. When a player, defensive or offensive, tries to trick the official by either defensively flopping and falling on the ground or offensively faking like you get hurt. Away from the ball. It was Anthony away from the ball. Biggest lead again. 15 for BYU. Stefanovic is fouled on his way to the bucket. You took two different teams to the NCAA tournament. Bob Wenzel is the head coach. How do you flip a switch if you're Utah and engage your three-point shooters who have really struggled in this game? I think you don't do anything. You just keep doing what you're doing. Play at home. That's one thing. <laughs> uh, but it, there's no magic to it. I mean, uh, you, people have off nights, and uh, this is an off night for them, created by the aggressive defense of BYU. Robinson has played well in this game. Carlson's fouled by Atiki, who fouls out with that reach over the back. Nice job by Atiki. He played a good game. He was needed early in this game when there was questions about who was a better team. And he really contributed a lot defensively, blocked several shots, got after it on the glass, tipped the ball to guys. Noah Waterman is in. He's got four fouls. Also in is Richie Saunders, a freshman, who's given Mark Pope some really nice minutes in this game. He's been impressive. His quickness and speed, very impressive. Stefanovic. And Utah gets a bucket. Lazar Stefanovic, a sophomore out of Serbia. Seems like a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> that was a 15-point lead, now cut. George. Uh -uh. Stefanovic. Can Utah make a run? Madsen in transition. That's a three. You bet. They can make a run. If those two get hot, Stefanovic and Madsen, Utah's got a puncher's chance. Under five minutes left. Traore. Been outstanding. Gets under and gets fouled. When he's isolated in there, he can score on most people. He goes under the basket, tries to use the rim to prevent Carlson from coming over, and Carlson got him in the head. First personal on Carlson. You know, you think about the West Coast Conference, and you always think about Gonzaga and secondarily St. Mary's. But BYU has always been there. And this year, it looks like it's going to be no exception. There's some improved teams there. Portland's improved. Santa Clara's improved. San Francisco has played well. St. Mary's actually, in the net, is rated a few pegs higher than Gonzaga, though Gonzaga's win against Alabama today will help. And Wooster gets loose for a bucket, and suddenly Utah has some flow. And that tells you how much you should trust the net. Approaching four minutes left. Wooster chasing Williams around. Traore's got a mismatch with Wooster on his back. They got double. They got double. And his pass is knocked away by Anthony. And here come the running Utes. Hunting for a bucket.
Wooster against Traore. Cut off. Stefanovic. Yes, he hits a three. And look at Utah. Down 15. They've cut out two minutes ago when I asked you the best thing for Craig Smith to try to get the three-point shots to go down is just keep doing the things that you were doing. And all of a sudden, they've gone down and they've made their run. I think guys, you know, they realize they've got to do something here. So those who were hesitant earlier, Wooster and Stepanovich, really, a lot. They're not so hesitant now. Hall and Traore was turned away at the rim. Wooster, great catch by Anthony. In the lane, he's fouled, and he goes to the line. <laughs> Anthony is looking at the officials and says, it's about time. I've been in here getting my brains beat out, but I haven't gotten to the line. Right here. Body. Gideon made a good try. He said, he, I had my hands up, and he did, but he hit him with his lower body. Anthony, not a great free throw shooter on the season, under 60%. He's three of three in this ball game. He's a blue guy. Misses there. And when you have a blue guy that gets you 11 and 7, that's a luxury that every coach would love. Especially the 7. All those rebounds that he gets. Five point game. Hall is quick. Traore misses the one hander. Anthony has the rebound. And here comes Utah trying to take a bigger bite out of this lead. Down 15. They've crawled within five. Under three left. High, low. Matt, that's a tough catch, and Carlson scores! And look at this! It's a three-point game, and look at the run by Utah. 13-1. to one. Crowd has really quieted. Williams falling away. Rudy! Cool cat. Cool cougar. He's got 21. Oh, a turnover. Madsen over the head and arms of Carlson. 2.07 left. Full court pressure. When you're tired, this can open up the court for BYU if they get through it. Williams splits the double. Races in the front court. George, a three, maybe not a great shot. Traore the rebound. Hall steps into one and hits it! spurt by BYU. Now Utah has to regroup and get back to where they were. They got back close by making some threes. But you gotta defend. You can't trade baskets here. 149 left. Who's gonna get the rebound? Madsen comes for the ball. Carlson and Wooster. Both can shoot threes. Wooster's got to go. Jumper on the way. Oh, off the Wooster's got to go. He said he was fouled. It's a five-point game. It goes as a two. Full court pressure. And Williams escapes that pressure. He's so quick, he can dribble through things. One time without a foul. Williams in the lane. Yeah, Rudy. 23. Anthony hits the jumper. Timeout. BYU feels like Anthony pushed off. And I think either a foul or a flop was called. Yeah, I think it's a flop. I think Utah's going to get a free throw out of this. It's the second one we've seen in this game. 
no warning this year and no change of possession. No, you, you go from where the play ended. So the free throw is good. It's essentially a three-point play, but no change of possession because at the end of the play, BYU had the ball. So they'll get it. 48 seconds left. The lead is at five. Williams, a one-man press break. Stumbles and is fouled. Rudy Williams has had all kind of great shots in this game. Came in, made two threes his first time right here. The Euro step avoids people blocking his shot. Fifth personal on Gabe Madsen. That eliminates one three-point shooting threat. Williams is an excellent free throw shooter. 80% on the season. Three of three in this game. For those of you tuning in for the Wyoming-Dayton game, you'll be able to find it streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn as soon as it tips off. Of course, we'll get you out there immediately with the finish of this. Great rivalry, Utah-BYU, 15-point BYU melted to three. Cougars have stretched it back to seven, and Utah's running out of time. Wooster, air ball, Wooster, shot fake, three, missed it, BYU rebound, it's George, and he's fouled. 30 seconds left. Eli Ballstead with the foul. He's just off the bench. Boy, what a big day for Gideon George. Right? Not just on the court, but off the court. His charity. Getting 10,000 pairs of sneakers donated. And sneakers for Africa drive and here he is trying to put the finishing touches on a rivalry win over hated rival Utah Anthony steps through and makes the layup 22 seconds left still a ways to go here Utah Bob Wenzel if you're Utah foul right away got to there's the inbound, and there's the foul. Cooler heads. This used to be a rivalry that at times boiled over. I think eventually, I mean, Ballstadt is bleeding. And he was the one who fouled. I mean, it's, it's a great rivalry, but, you know, back in the day, Roger Reed versus Rick Majerus, things got a little nasty. In fact, uh, probably about eight years ago, they actually didn't play for a year just to let both sides cool down. It took a year to cool down? It took a whole That's year a long time. to cool down. <laughs> but this has been a well-played game. It's not an easy game to officiate. I think the officials have done a pretty good job. Dallin Hall hits the two free throws. Stefanovic forced the three. Ballstead lost it out of bounds. And with 14 seconds left, the, the 18,000 can really exhale and start the celebration.
maybe start thinking about that bowl game, right? <laughs> I mean, that's that was it. They were thinking, well, what kind of crowd will they have? The students are out. The uh, BYU Cougars bowl game is underway in New Mexico. That's not good. That's a turnover by BYU. And Stefanovic under the bucket lays it up and in. There's 11 seconds left. Be difficult shots. Craig Smith talking to him right there. It's a little unusual. He says, Rudy, you're killing us. <laughs> Got to get it in, and they do. And of course, it's Rudy, and he's going to the line. Wooster with the reach and the foul. You know, Utah from from here dives right into a schedule that is, is not easy. They've got TCU, but that's going to be in Salt Lake. TCU's a top 25 team. But that's not a home game. That, no, that's the downtown. In yeah, Utah Jazz. it's a neutral site. And then they're right into Pac-12 play with a road trip to Northern California. And so it accelerates pretty quickly for Utah. BYU's got some non-conference games before they start West Coast Conference play. Rudy hits a free throw. Now with 10 seconds left. You're going to need like a, a double technical on Cosmo to put Utah in a position. Wooster. Long three, missed it. The crowd doesn't like the foul since the game is over. A lot of smiles on the guys with the blue uniforms on. Do you think that in 1909, in the first game, that it was blue versus red at the time? Uh, I'm not sure what the rules were, but, you know, Pretty soon after that, you, you know, you had to have the white uniforms at home and the colored uniforms on the road. So, I mean, uh, all the photos I saw were black and white, so it's <laughs> hard to tell. But this is this the 263rd meeting between these two. They had cameras back then? They did. BYU leads the series with this win, 134 to 129. And Utah on this floor has lost 10 of their last 11. And a huge win from...